I'm uh, Dr. Nolene Wright. I work in the Wolf Malcolm Institute of Educational Research and uh, I spend quite a bit of my time looking at digital technologies in education as well as teaching to people to be secondary school teachers in that field. Well digital technologies, particularly mobile ones, are um, happening quite a lot even from early childhood. So for instance iPads are being used. For instance look at this little picture here of a of a under five year old outside using an iPad. And that's just one example. They're being used in primary schools quite a lot and increasingly in secondary schools where some schools are even mandating such technologies. Certainly they have a place, like any kind of technology, whether you're talking about a pen or a book, if anything can be used for learning, then there is absolutely a point in using it. And it's never a matter of um, one thing displacing others, it means using them with appropriately um, for any particular learning. So if if a technology is going to help a student understand a concept better than if it wasn't used, then it would be silly not to, not to use it. Well certainly the more, more mobile the technology is, the more likely it is that a student will be able to use it in class and for just-in-time learning. And certainly with the advent of um, greater and more robust Wi-Fi in schools, this is becoming increasingly important, just as it is for our own lives um, beyond school. I certainly do inspect, uh, expect a greater use of them in classrooms. For example, the Ministry of Education is rolling out um, ultra-fast broadband to schools. This is more likely to mean that schools will have robust Wi-Fi, which in turn will mean that um, there is a greater likelihood of uh, mobile digital technologies becoming the, the most common tool for learning. I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Human Development and Counselling at the Faculty of Education. Obviously there's not one right way to be creative. Um, creativity in itself uh, is manifested in a variety of ways and that's why it's so important. It's really important as part of the curriculum because the New Zealand curriculum in fact embodies and celebrates the need for young people to be creative, to be energetic and to be enterprising. That's actually cited in their vision statement. This curriculum is what schools are required and mandated to teach um, with and to from when a child starts to school, starts at school right through to when they leave school. So it's, it's really uh, an essential foundation document. It also has in the values section of the curriculum the importance of young people being innovative, inquiring and curiosity. These two are central traits in creativity so we need to ensure that young people are exposed to creative ideas, are encouraged to be creative themselves and build processes that enable them to thrive. Well the benefits are multiple and are extremely important. Uh, we have such a strong legacy of creativity in this country. We're the inventors of all sorts of amazing things from uh, seismic base isolators to milking machines to mountain buggies and the disposable syringe. Um, we also have Nobel Prize winners and a Fields Medal winner, Vaughan Jones in mathematics. Uh, creativity is relevant from maths through to science through to art. It's not discipline specific and it's, I think, uh, part of our natural and national uh, heritage, our 
personality. Uh, it's what New Zealand's known for in so many ways, from our winemakers to our fashion designers. We are seen as an innovative people and we need to celebrate this, uh, especially now when we have education policy that is somewhat more restrictive at present, which seems to uh, narrowly emphasise two areas, numeracy and literacy, in ways that are perhaps not as creative and responsive as they could be. Uh, there tends to be too much teaching to set targets at present as a result of um, recent policies and not enough uh, joyous learning, uh, learning around oh, using the, the creative processes of tolerating ambiguity, of resisting premature closure and of wrestling with problems for which there are not straightforward answers, for which there may be many competing perspectives that need to be considered. We desperately need people to do this. Why? Because society's problems are increasingly complex. We have we are beset with more and more issues that, for which there are not straightforward answers, whether this is an environmental issue or an economic issue. We need people who can explore possible and multiple pathways and bring new solutions into being. This is what creativity does. They will see and hear many examples of what great teachers are doing to enhance creativity. They will see some surprises about what young people can achieve. And I think they will be impressed with what education can do to enhance the creative milieu, the creative capacity of of human beings. So if you're really interested in finding out more about what I've got to say on the topic of digital technologies and education, come along to the Winter Series in August and you'll be able to hear what I've got to say and some of my colleagues and perhaps ask your own question too. Look forward to seeing you. Please come along and hear more about creativity and how important it is in education and in life. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you.